No, I know what you mean. I, I, the first McGovern script I read was Cracker. And I recognised that Jimmy McGovern, even though we're a slightly different generation, was felt the same way about television as I did. Um, so it was already in motion, really, that, that feeling of doing intelligent work that didn't treat the audiences like idiots. It was already, for me, it was part of my career. But Hillsborough was, was and is, remains the greatest example of that. Um, as I've said, Trevor Hicks um, gave me incredible access to his heart and his mind um, about that experience. And uh, being a comparatively young person, um, of course, I was probably over anxious and over keen to to do to do him justice. And you know what's what's great about Jimmy is. is Obviously, he's completely in sympathy with what happened to the, to the family members, but he also presents them as flawed human beings, uh, mm -hmm. which makes his message more powerful. And Trevor was not always regarded as the great hero, and probably wasn't, and other people neither. That's what makes McGovern's work powerful, is a three-dimensional. And, you know, this kind of tragedy can behave, make people behave in all manner of ways. Trevor clung to, in almost, in almost perhaps, well, in a very human way, he clung to the idea of being a man of uh, convention and a man who, of establishment, but it was a mask. Like, we all wear masks, but that was a mask to conceal his own grief, and everybody else had different ways, so he turned up suited and booted, and his thing was dignity at all times. He was falling apart. And that's what McGovern no saw. That's what's brilliant about McGovern. He sees beneath the mask. What's clear is that the stadia, because we've had the, we had the Bradford Fire disaster, um, were in need of uh, refurbishment. And Jimmy makes the point, you know, I think within the, within the script about this is a, a working class pursuit and it wouldn't happen uh, were it a middle class pursuit. So it highlighted issues like that. I know, for instance, Trevor Hicks still is completely against allowing fans to stand. Um, I don't know how I feel about that, but uh, I hope that answers your question. I knew it was the truth. Yeah. I knew it was a, an excellent script, and I knew, I knew I was doing it for the right reasons. So, no, I wasn't nervous. I mean, I was nervous. The big thing for all the actors and the producer and the director was that before the nation saw it, or the press saw it, it had to be showed to the Hillsborough Family Support Group. There was a lot of nervousness on all the actors' parts about how they received it. Because if they had felt misrepresented, uh, you know, you've, 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 you've not done your job properly. I didn't give a monkeys what the press said about it, to be honest. Um, you understand why. I didn't care what the press said. And I think we did have some pretty distasteful comments from uh, the man in the Sunday Times. Uh, what's his name? Oh, who cares? Yeah, um, <laughs> who wants to read that? Um, <laughs> but no, no, when you know, when you, I wasn't particularly confident about my work, but I knew that the script held up. And my nerves, I, you know, vanity about your performance involved in something that just doesn't come into it. It just doesn't, doesn't enter into it. No, I'd never had anything to do with the Sun newspaper <laughs> <laughs> before and <laughs> it's not a newspaper though, is it? <laughs> no, it's not. There's a question here, this gentleman in yellow, could you pass the mic forward please? You won't regard me as a football fan because I'm a season ticket holder at Man United <laughs> <laughs> and I've been going there since I was seven and my mum worked at the ground uh, in the 40s my old man was a season ticket all his life. Um, so, yes, I'm a yeah, I'm a football fan, huge football fan. Um, I think I, in, in something I said earlier, I watched it unfold um, in a the in a dressing room in Bristol because the the semi-finals were were televised. It was BBC at the time, mm. 
So uh, in between coming in off stage, we turned it on and, and suddenly it started to unfold. But of course, you didn't know, you, you, you didn't, it, it took a couple of days really for the magnitude of it to, to hit you. And you know, I was young and it's only, for, for, from my experience, it's only when you meet the, the families uh, and start to examine what it's done to people personally. Newspapers can't do it. Well, they lie about it anyway, but they can't do it. It's when you meet the people that you can put yourself in their shoes. Yeah. Somebody connected to my own family said, I bumped into her and said, well, I don't think you should be doing that because I think the police do a good job. You're just not going to change people like that. It's a kind of simplistic knee-jerk reaction. But yeah, you know what I think what's really going on is some people just don't want, can't bear to think about it. And they're only ever going to think about it if it happens to them. And I, you know, part of being a human being is to be able, is to have the imagination, I think, to put yourself in everybody else's shoes. And then you won't do have things happening like we have happening at, you know, I go to Old Trafford and I had United fans saying, how can you be in something about Liverpool? Can you imagine that? <laughs> But you also have things with Liverpool fans coming to Old Trafford and, and um, you know, daubing the Munich Monument. It's incredible what goes on with, with some factions of supporters. But then you see a United scar, for me as a United fan, you know, to see United scars on the, gate, the, the Hillsborough gates at Anfield means a lot. And the same at Old Trafford. Um, but, you, yeah, you get morons. Can I just um, ask about your relationship with Jimmy? Um, going back to um, Cracker was your first um, collaboration, wasn't it? Yeah. Can you remember um, getting a, your first script for Cracker and how you felt about that? And um, you, you obviously knew already about Jimmy's work. Didn't the you? only thing, I'd, yeah, I'd seen a thing called Needle, which he wrote about heroin addiction in it here in Liverpool. Um, and the thing that I read the first episode of Cracker and I, I was in a bed sit unemployed and I read this, got this script and I thought, oh, another copper thing, you know, <laughs> on the prime suspect bandwagon, you know, coppers. But on the third, third page, there was a line, I've said this before, um, I rehearsed the death of my father for years and I thought, what, what's that about? That's, that's um, idiosyncratic, slightly confessional. And it, it, was that, it was that speech at the beginning which Fitz does when he's throwing all the books in the audience. But it was that line. I rehearsed the death of my father for years. Um, and it, Jimmy goes into a thing about, and I was imagining how heroically I'd behave at his funeral and all that. And I thought, oh, that's, that's very human. Mm -hmm. You don't get that kind of thing on television. Mm -hmm. So it was, it was Cracker and then, then about, a, about seven more, I think. Mm -hmm. It's because I'm cheap. <laughs> <laughs> so would you say that that kind of opened the, after Cracker then um, that opened other doors because you did go to drama school didn't you did you always want to act no I wanted to play central midfield at Old Trafford <laughs> <laughs> I did but I was hopeless uh, uh, yeah exactly <laughs> <laughs> surprising I'm not playing eh? <laughs> Liverpool signed me obviously um, uh, yeah I did uh, um, no, I, I, I kind of I wanted to be a footballer. That didn't happen. Um, and then I was lost, really. I didn't know what I was doing. Uh, and I kind of I went to a sixth form college to reset my O levels. Failed them. But I was, you know, they did plays there. So I did a play there. And there was a girl in it. And I thought, this is the, God, this is the, <laughs> this is the job for me. <laughs> She's a bit posher than me. You know, you get that kind of girl in my game. <laughs> a bit of social climbing, you know. Uh, no, well, I can't catch him anymore. I did a film called Elizabeth, oh, yeah. and my dad saw it, and, I, and he said, The Duke of Norfolk? You sounded like the Duke of Salford. <laughs> <laughs> Thanks, Dad. I was trying to do my best posh. What's, what's your preference, film or television? Television. You get the best scripts in television. That's not, you know, there's a snobbishness. With some film actors, like, oh, don't do television, darling. <laughs> and it's bollocks, you know. You do not get the quality of script in <coughs> British film that you get, or certainly when I was starting out, in British television. Mm -hmm. 
I think it's like any other trade. I think you the 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 goal to pursue is not money or um, fame. It's quality of work. Because at the end, when you've finished, when I've finished, I'm hoping that there's a body of work that will stand up. You know, so be true to yourself, really, and look and and you're only as good as your script. That's what I've found. I've been called a good actor. It's not because I'm a good actor. It's because I pick good scripts, principally McGovern's. And so, so find writers, and they will make you a good actor. Yeah, because without the writer, we wouldn't have any TV that's or any that's film it. at all. The most important thing in my industry is the writer and the script. And with Clapperboard, we don't promote celebrity culture at all. It's about giving young people the opportunity that I never had and... You know, it's about bringing creativity into um, education. Don't don't only go up for scouse roles. You know, I, that's what you know. You want to be the most uh, versatile actor you possibly can. Um, but if they look down on you, you know, you'll get your revenge in the end. That's what I feel. <laughs> they look down on me. Probably I'll just keep going, and that, it's their problem. Okay, well, I think on that note, I'll just have to thank Chris and say it's been a great experience sitting here chatting to him, and thanks again for coming along. Thanks for really coming. Appreciate it. Thank you.